Hello and welcome. Before you watch this video, pause it and try this problem on your own. Then resume the video and compare your notes with us. Alright, so let's start by reading the problem. It says, what is the correlation coefficient of the linear fit of the data shown below to the nearest hundredth? Okay, so first of all, um, the correlation coefficient can be thought of as a measure of how close our data fits the line we're drawing to represent it. So again, it's how close does the data fit the line that we're using to represent it. So here, if you look at these points, if we uh, draw a line that represent it, represents it, we wouldn't draw a line like this, of course, or like this, because they don't match up to or fit the data at really at all. So here we kind of informally can just draw a line of best fit. It's a line that's really close <laughs> to our data, or closer than the ones I just drew. Um, so for example, this line, sorry, this line is still not really a line of best fit. You can tell because some of these, like these two points right here are still pretty far from the line. The line you draw should be reasonable for as many points as possible. So I'll draw maybe this line, a little bit better of a fit. So again, the correlation coefficient is measuring, well, how well do these points fit or how close are they to the line that we're drawing? Now, look at our four choices. We've got one, negative 0.93, positive 0.93, and negative one. What you should know about the correlation coefficient, um, I think the variable we use is r, if I remember, for the correlation coefficient. Let me just, so r is the correlation coefficient. Um, its range is from negative one, so it can be larger than or equal to negative one, all the way up to an equal and positive one. So negative one and positive one are the two extremes of the correlation coefficient, and what they are, those extremes represent are uh, lines, right? So perfect positive fit or perfect negative fit. And you can think of positive and negative fit, positive one and negative one um, as positive and negative slope in a way. So here, for example, let's say r equals one. It's exactly one. Well, that would mean a line, we have some positive line somewhere. We don't know if the slope of the line is one, we just know that the, po the slope is positive and the fit is perfect. So it's exactly a line. Whereas if r was negative one, right, that would, so if r was negative one, that would just mean we have a perfect line somewhere with a negative slope. Again, the slope might not be negative one per se. We don't really know what the slope is. Um, sorry. Uh, but we do know that it has a negative slope. So I'll draw it again, right? And it's a perfect fit. So the, the, the r value represents how fit it is. As soon as the points begin to deviate, right, which you would expect, you wouldn't expect in a lot of scenarios to have a perfect fit, then you're decreasing your R values, right? So here, or I should say, it's getting closer to zero. So these red points, let's go start here. I don't know, um, I'm not calculating exactly what the R value is, but it fits the, um, the line less perfect than the points that are on the line. So maybe this fit, is it's greater than zero. I'll show you what zero might look like in a moment, but it's certainly less than one. Maybe it's a good fit. Maybe it's about, I don't know, 0 0.9. 0 0.9 is a great fit, right? Um, here, the R value might be still negative slope, so now it's just negative point. I say 0.8 because I put the points a little bit further from the line. Uh, 0.8 is a good fit as well. And it gets really interesting, uh, you know, what is good fit, what is bad fit, how do we know, where's the exact border? Well, with statistics here, there's a lot of debate involved. So you can argue whether or not something is a good fit and whether or not the R value you have um, is something that represents a good fit, right? There's some debate in there. So you can see that in this question, we, we're going to cancel out choices one and four because those represent perfect lines. We don't have that right here. The points are scattered around the line. And because this line has a negative slope, right, the slope's about what? Down one, two, three three, four, five, and then over one, two, three, four. So our delta x is four, and our delta y, we're going down, oops, down five there, sorry. So the slope, got messy, delta y equals negative five. We're down five, and delta x is positive four. Our slope, our m value, remember our m is for slope, is about negative five over four. But it's still a negative slope, so you know the correlation coefficient is negative. Then the only choice left 
is negative 0 0.93. It makes sense. This is a pretty good fit. What about a zero fit? Because zero is like the worst fit possible. Um, that's an example. I And I actually, I want to follow up on this. I'm not sure if it's really possible to get an exact value of zero, like if that's truly possible. Um, I think we can definitely get close to it because if you begin to really just scatter the points, right, here, attempting to do a random scattering, right, you can see that there's just no correlation here between the location on the x-axis and the y-axis. For this point right here, we go up a little bit on the x and then go up on the y. The next point up here, we go up a little bit further on the x and then the y skyrockets. Then we go up on x and the y goes down and down and down and up. And like, how would you represent this with a line? It'd be kind of like maybe a squiggle. Like, like, why even bother? Why even bother modeling this if there's no correlation? So here, r is about zero. And I think I'm going to follow up because now I'm curious how do we create a situation where r is exactly zero, and what would that look like? Ooh, how fun is that? Thanks. Bye.